of the different factors with the business cycle. We discussed about the stock market, uh, the bond market, the spread between the bonds, <coughs> and so on. So just to review, discuss with your partner about the relationship between the financial variables and the, and the business cycle. So we discussed at the end of the last class. between the uh, stock market and the business cycle. So here is the recession. The grey line is the recession, the blue line is the stock market. So what's the relationship between the stock market and the recession? GDP is going down <coughs> the same direction. What about this uh, interest rate on the government bond and the business cycle? So it's going up here and here and here. It's going up, right? And is it pro cyclical or counter cyclical? <coughs> so the interest rate is the interest rate pro cyclical or counter cyclical? The interest rate is going up, GDP is going down. Counter cyclical, right? What about the spread on government bonds? Zhou Liu Miang, Chao Li Ming. spread between the long term and the short term government bonds. Leading and? And the relationship is counter. Counter okay. What about the corporate and government bonds? Mo Wei Wei. Counter 
anticyclical, so it's getting bigger, right? While the recession or the GDP is going down. So, uh, so we are going to talk. We already discussed about macroeconomics, basic ideas in the first week. So now we are going to talk about the relationship of the business cycle and macroeconomics. Okay, that's an important debate these days in economics. Basically, economists are divided on two sides. There are called the demand side and the supply side economists. Supply side economists is more from Germany or Austria. Generally, of course, we have many supply side economists in the US too, right? And demand side economists is more in the UK, US, right? So, if we look at major countries, we have, like, just like the currencies, we have the US, Japan, Germany, and the UK, okay? So, uh, <coughs> so Keynes, do you know is Keynes demand side or supply side economist, British economist? Have you heard of him before? No. John Maynard Keynes? Is he supply side or demand side economist? Supply side. Hmm? Try again. <laughs> yes. okay. So they agreed that business cycle occur, but they disagreed on whether the government should intervene or not. So the business cycle happens, so the question that these guys are asking, intervene, should the government intervene? So if the government intervenes, what is the government going to affect? How can the government intervene in the economy if we have a shock, if we're in a recession, what can the government do? To help. So that's the demand side. Spend more money, and then that should increase demand. Okay, in the economy. So how how can the government spend money? Some welfare. Welfare. What else? Infrastructure. <coughs> Infrastructure. So they build roads, build hospitals, build schools, and then as the demand goes up, what else improves? People's expectations, right? Because the government is spending money. So the demand increases, they want to improve the expectations because of this reason. Do you think that could work? We have a recession, the government spends a lot of money on building roads and building hospitals and hiring people. It works in the Great Depression, it's worked before. Sometimes they, governments spend money on projects which were kind of useless. Uh, in Ireland they had some bad economic recession in the 19th century. The government decided to uh, hire the people making roads in the middle of nowhere, <coughs> right? So in Ireland you can see a lot of roads in the middle of nowhere, or empty stone wall, stone wall, useless stone wall, and they also made them build some wooden structure, just to give them some work to do. Then they just, at the end, just break down the wooden structure. Do you understand that idea? So the government sometimes they're not worrying if this money is actually being spent well or not. Okay? In the extreme example, they are building roads in the middle of nowhere or building some structure they're going to knock down again. Okay? But they want to spend money, increase the demand, increase expectations. Of course, this is more useful if the government spends the money well, right? On useful things rather than 
not useful things. Okay, China has spent a lot of money on infrastructure. The government spend, spends a lot of money in China, right? Do you have too much infrastructure in China nowadays? No. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yes, so you have a lot of infrastructure. You have some very modern trains in China, right? Mm -hmm. Modern public transport, that kind of thing. So, <coughs> government should spend money. How else can the government intervene? <coughs> what about the supply side? What do they want the government to do? Government All right, they are going to <coughs> intervene here. They are going to save money. So, cut spending. Yeah. And what are they going to do with with cutting the spending, something else. They will maybe lower regulation for business. Do you understand regulation? Mm -hmm. So lower taxes and lower re regulation for businesses, right? Cut taxes, cut spending, lower regulation for businesses. Uh, so, what should happen here? What are they hoping will happen in this case? How should the economy improve? Lower taxes and regulations will stimulate people to open new business. Yes, so lower taxes and regulations for business. So this is the supply side, so we are going to increase the supply. Why? We have more businesses. Right? It's easier for businesses. Easier for businesses. They have an easier life. Okay? So we increase the supply here. This is supply side economics. And people's expectations, and they also think they can improve people's expectations. Because here, often they think we're wasting, government is wasting money. So if the government is wasting money, Investors don't have confidence in the economy. Okay? Can you understand that idea? But if the government is not wasting money, investors have more confidence in the economy and we can help the small business. We can improve the supply side. So two different ideas. <coughs> so everybody agrees that there are business cycles, but they disagree about how and if the government should intervene. Okay, so first of all, to understand if the government and how the government should try to control the business cycle, first of all, we need to understand the origin of the business cycle. Where does the business cycle come from? So what causes the economy to expand and contract? What market forces can dampen or magnify? Do you understand magnify? Do you have a magnifying glass? Make bigger, magnify. Okay, economic swings. So this is a model of the macroeconomy. So we have outcomes. Output, we talked about important outcome, right? Jobs, prices, inflation, growth, economic growth, international balances. Okay, uh, affecting these outcomes we have market forces, external shocks, and the policy of the government. So, market forces, population growth, spending behavior, intervention and innovation, they are some examples of market forces. So, populations are growing constantly in countries, right? How are, are people spending or not spending? Po you often see in the crisis the politicians blame the people. What do they say? People are spending too much or not spending enough? during a recession? Not spending. not spending enough, right? During one of the things of the business cycle is that here the people, if we look at spending and saving, people spend, right? A lot of money. They get loans. They spend the money. Okay? The GDP is increasing, growing quickly. Then we have a recession. People save, pay back loans. 
Okay? They are spending their money. So spending and saving can affect the business cycle. Okay? Do you understand that idea? So that's a very simple one that politicians try to get people to to some politicians to save more, get people to save more here. But then when people are not spending, they get annoyed because people don't spend money, the government doesn't look good, the taxing take is not good, right? Sometimes it's government just happens to be in power here, and another government happens to be in power here. It's not so much that this government is doing a good job and this government is doing a bad job, right? It's just they happen to be in power at a different time of the business cycle. So this government wants people to spend money, so they look better. Okay. So innovation, we talked about uh, the recently in the 90s, we had the innovation of I IT boom, right? In the 80s, we had the PC, the computer. But in the 90s, we have the internet taking off, internet shopping, internet searching, uh, programs like Office and Word. Do you think that, have you ever used Microsoft Office? Yes. Microsoft Word? Yes. Do you think that kind of innovation made the economy much more productive? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, right? In the old days, people had to write everything by hand. They had to keep the files. Okay, so if we have the Microsoft Office program or Excel, we can do the spreadsheet very quickly and easily. It's an innovation which helps us to be more productive. So that, that's going to affect GDP growth. We'll have a higher GDP growth, more jobs, and so on. External shock, wars, natural disasters. In Japan, they had a natural disaster. Can you name some natural disasters in English? Earthquake. What else? Tsunami. Tsunami. Volcano. Mudslide. China, you have some mudslide. Flooding. That kind of thing. Terrorist attacks. Unfortunately, these days we have terrorist attacks. Trade disruptions. So in Russia, currently there's a trade disruption. Okay, so that upsets the economy. Then we have the government policy, tax policy, spending. High taxes or low taxes. Spending more money, spending less money. Regulation. Do you understand regulation? Yes. What does regulation mean? Limitation. What's an example of a regulation for a pizza restaurant? Don't use waste food. Don't use the bad food. Yes. Food which has gone off, has been there for two weeks. Yes. So somebody comes and checks the restaurant is not using the bad food, right? What would happen if there was no regulation? Would the restaurant make a bigger profit? Yes. Yes, they could serve the bad food. Some people might say, well, people will get sick and what not come back, right? <laughs> but maybe the restaurant can make a bigger profit with no regulation. But is it good for the society? No. No, so we have to find the right balance of regulation, which allows the business to prosper, and also which is good for society. Okay? So the government makes the regulations. So then we have output, we talked about before, GDP, jobs, prices, growth, and international balances. So we're going to talk about supply and demand. So we need to look inside the macroeconomy. So the macro outcomes are the result of market transactions, supply and demand. <coughs> So perhaps you've already seen this model, the aggregate demand model. So this, we use a <coughs> graph to describe the behavior of buyers in the market. Okay, aggregate demand is the total quantity of output, goods and services, demanded at a price level in a given time period. So if the price goes up, is there going to be more demand or less demand? Less demand, right? If the price goes down, is there going to be more demand or less demand? Okay, so the price goes down, people will want more. So to understand that concept, imagine everybody is paid on the same day with their incomes in hand. They go into the market. 
the question becomes, how much output will people purchase? Okay. So is it, a, is it going to be a straight line or a curved line? If the price keeps getting lower, will people still keep buying this more and more and more at the same rate? Or will they buy more at a, at a, at a slower rate? Slower. slower rate, because they already have a lot of that, right? So they don't need that much more. So they're going to buy more at the lower price, but the line is not going to be straight. It's going to be a curved line. Okay. So we, <laughs> if goods are cheap, people will buy more with their income, to a, to a certain limit. But high prices will limit willingness and ability to buy. <coughs> so uh, we talked about the slope. So the downward slope means that at lower price levels, people will buy more goods and services, but only until a certain point. So here we have the demand. So price is high here. People are buying very, this is output, low number of output at the high price, okay? Price is here, price is low. People are buying a lot of output. Have you seen that graph before? Yes. <coughs> so, uh, we have some reasons for the downward slope. So, a change in the price level affects the purchasing power of money. We can buy more. Uh, foreign trade effect. The balance of trade demand depends on the domestic price level relative to foreign. So, we might decide to buy more foreign goods. And the interest effect rate effect, the change in the price level affects demand for the loan purchases. So then we have the supply, which is the opposite. So uh, clearly, if the price is higher, do suppliers want to supply more or less? If the price is lower, are suppliers going to supply more or less? If the price is low, I'm a supplier. Am I going to supply more or less? Yes. Did anybody say more this time? Hmm? So I'm making bicycles, okay? I'm a supplier. The price of bicycles is $100. Okay, I supply a lot of bicycles. The price of bicycle goes up to $200. Oh, great, I'm going to work harder. Sell, might make more bicycles, hire more staff, okay? Price of bicycles goes down to $20. I'm not give up. I'm not making bicycles anymore. Okay? I'm not going to supply bicycles. Okay, so the reason for the upward sloping curve is profit. That's why I produce goods and services to make a profit. Okay? But the cost goes up as I as I produce more. Okay? So that's why it also has a curve line. So I want to produce more bicycles. I have to hire more staff. What's going to happen to the salary of the staff? Goes up, right? So that kind of way. As I want to hire more staff, then the demand for the workers goes up, salary goes up. Okay, so it's also a curved line. So this is the supply. Low price, low supply. Higher price, higher supply. So then the equilibrium, equilibrium means uh, where things are balanced is where they are at e equilibrium. So <coughs> the equilibrium is going to be the price where the supply and demand curves meet. Okay? And the GDP is also meeting. <coughs> so this equilibrium is unique. It is the only price level output that is compatible with supply and demand. So here we can see in the middle we have the we have the supply line and the demand line. Okay? And here at this price we have this much output. Okay? If the price is here, we have high demand, right? But we only have this much supply. So it's going, to, it's going, output is going to be here. Okay. Even though people are demanding, suppliers is not supplying. 
Okay? Price is too low. Right. So we are sorry, the other way around, right? <laughs> this is demand. So even though the uh, people are supplying a lot because the price is high, then we don't have the demand. People think the price is too high. So they're not going to buy the goods. Okay? So the output is just going to be here. And then the opposite here, right? We have the supply. Uh, they're not going to supply because the price is too low. Okay? But we have high demand. So output will still be here. So this is the place where we they meet. Okay? Supply and demand meet. This is the output. <coughs> so this is the only point on the graph that we are going to have. If the point is here, then the output is then very low. Uh, demand is uh, low high and so, uh, so the price is high so demand is low here and supply is high so what's going to happen is it's going to move towards here okay so gradually the <coughs> we're going to make the demand is going to get higher as the suppliers reduce the price and the price gets lower okay suppliers are not selling here so they reduce their price and then it's going to meet in the middle. Okay. Do you have any question about this part? <coughs> so, it, we can have some failure here, right? The equilibrium price or output level may not satisfy policy goals. So the equilibrium might not be what we want. We want the GDP to be growing but it's not growing. And also we have instability. It may not last for a long time. Okay? So this is the problem in a recession. This is where we are, this output. This is where we want to be, this output, which is full employment. Okay? Full employment, usually the unemployment rate will still be about 2 or 3 percent because there are, there are some people who don't want to work but not many, just 2 or 3 percent, okay? So, we want to get to this kind of full employment, right? So we need to increase, find some way to get to this point on, on the graph. That's our goal. So we can also have the... <coughs> it's not instability, right? So we can have some shift. So why does the line shift? The supply line can shift because the cost of production changes. What's a major factor in the cost of production? The price of what? What's a raw material which affects a lot of production very strongly? <coughs> Oil. Okay. Whatever I'm producing, I use electricity, right? Electricity also based on the price of oil. Okay, I probably am going to transport my goods by truck or ship, okay, or airplane. So the price of oil is included there. Okay, so if the oil goes up, if we don't, if we're importing oil, Russia is not importing oil, but uh, Ireland and Korea are importing oil. So the oil price goes up, cost of production goes up. What's going to happen to supply? Okay. What will happen to output? Goes down, right? The supply line shifts, the supply goes down, then the output is also going to go down. Okay? It costs more for suppliers to supply if the oil price goes up. So they no longer want to supply at this price. Okay, they're going to only supply at the higher price. Okay? So the line will change. We'll see in a minute. Okay, demand can be, or sorry, we saw here natural disasters like an earthquake. Tax policy uh, can also shift the supply. So we can see tax here. If the government cuts taxes, what should happen to supply? Go up, right? We said here, the cut tax supply should go up. 
If we increase the taxes, what should happen to supply? Go down. Go down, right? So, uh, demand shifts can be caused by the changes in export, export demand, expectations, taxes, or other events. So this, they're more worried about here, right? If people have a bad expectation, then they're going to save the money to pay back their loans, okay? Because they think, I could lose my job in the future, okay? If you're going to lose your job, you think you're going to lose your job, are you going to take out a loan and buy a new house? Are you going to buy a new BMW, 100 million? Elok, loan? No? Probably not, right? You'll start saving money in case you lose your job. You need some savings. Okay? You pay back your credit card, pay back your loan. So, in this case, demand is going down. Right? Demand is changing. People's expectations about the future is very good. Oh, the economy is going great. Right? My, I think I'll get a promotion next year in my job and get a higher salary. They get loans and spend more money. Affects the demand. Other events can also affect demand. So here is a supply shift. So the supply shift, we can imagine the price of oil goes up, right? OPEC raises the price of oil, causing production costs to rise. This happened before the financial crisis in 2008, the price of oil went up a lot, okay, in 2006-2007. So, uh, do you know OPEC? Who is OPEC? Saudi Arabia, Iran. Or organization of Petroleum Exporters, right? So, uh, these days, why do you think the price of oil is very low? Because, well, alternative to fuel. Yes? Well, U.S. found recently some shale gas. Yes. The shale will be in Texas. Yes. So the U.S. has increased production a lot. Yes. What is one reason the U.S. has increased production? There are different reasons, like they found a new way to get the oil, right? But also they want to put pressure on Russia. So they want to increase their own oil production so that Russia has some pressure on there. Oil prices, right? Low oil price. Uh, OPEC uh, is, some people say it's a cartel. Do you understand cartel? Yes. yes. But it's losing power a little bit because of the US producing more oil. Okay? But OPEC makes decisions about supply. Is it going to supply more <coughs> oil or not? But these days they're supplying a lot of oil from OPEC. Okay? Just Iran also made a deal with the US. It means Iran will be supplying more oil. Before the market was frozen to Iran, they weren't allowed to sell oil to the Western Europe or American countries, right? But now the market is opened again to Iran, major oil producer. Who are the world's main oil producers? Saudi Arabia. Iran. Iraq. Venezuela. Russia. Okay. So, anyway, the price goes up, what happens to supply? Supplier says, my cost went up, so at this price, is not good enough for me anymore. Right? I want this price now. Higher price, or else I'm not going to supply. So then the equilibrium changes to here. Okay? This is now where supply meets demand. The line changed because the cost went up. And what happens? Our output goes down. Okay. We have a recession. Here, a demand shift, we have 9-11, affects physical and economic security. Do you understand 9-11? Yes. What were you doing on 9-11? Airplane break the plane. You were in controlling the airplane? And what were you doing? Was my question. I thought you were admitting to some terrorism. Can you remember what you were doing? You were too young? So, are people going to spend more money or less money in the US? Less money. So, demand changes to here, right? 
And again, the same idea. People don't want to buy, so they're only going to buy at the lower price. If you decrease the price, then I'll buy. Okay, you can think about the housing market. Okay? People don't want to buy houses, then I want to sell my house. I have to reduce the price, keep reducing the price. Okay? So we find the equilibrium here. But some people is not going to sell their house anyway, right? <coughs> They'll say, I'll keep it instead. But the price goes down to here, so output goes down. So we can have these kind of disturbances or problems. <coughs> so this is the model. This kind of graph is a model used by economists to explain what's happening in the economy using supply and demand and price, price level and output. Can you make this graph yourself? Yes, okay, so try to draw, draw a small graph about what happens this time if the oil price is decreased, the current situation, you have a very low oil price. So draw the supply and demand graph and you should have two supply lines. The supply line before the oil price was decreased and the supply line after the oil price was decreased. Can you draw on the board the graph that you can use the blue marker for the supply line and the black marker for the demand line? What's here and what's here? Okay, so the supplier should be able to, their cost goes down. Okay, so the supply, they will supply at the lower price, still make a profit. And we have more output. We should have more output. So, do you think that, well, we have many things which affect the price of oil, but demand, 
also affects the price of oil. So when we had the crisis in 2008, there was less demand for oil. So the price of oil went down. But also it may be that OPEC don't want to have a financial crisis, so they may reduce, increase supply and reduce the price of oil. So after the crisis, the price of oil went down a lot. This was trying to help some of the countries to increase their output okay, during the recession. So we have some competing theories about this instability. So this doesn't say who's right, this model, but it provides a framework for comparing the different <coughs> theories. We talked about the demand side theories, such as Keynes, right, and supply side theories. So this model helps us to explain about the different theories which we uh, just talked about. Okay? So demand side theories, um, we don't have enough demand here, so we need to increase demand. They want to talk about the demand shift, right? So this is a normal situation, demand is here. In the recession, people start saving money to pay back their loans, there's less demand, output goes down. Okay? So what Keynes wants to do, or the demand side economists want to do, they want the government to step in and spend a lot of money, people's expectations to improve, demand to go up, and then we'll have more output. Okay? So that's one idea. Can you understand that idea? We explained here. If we, pay, if we build a more simple way, we build more roads, Somebody who wasn't working before is now working, building a road. They're getting a salary. They're going to get more haircuts. Okay? They're going to go to the restaurant now. They're going to buy bicycles. So because they do all those things, they're goods and services. So the demand goes up for goods and services. Okay? The price goes up here, and the output goes up. Suppliers produce more. The price is going up, suppliers produce more. The output is, is better. Okay? So that's the idea of the demand side. Do we want the person that we're giving the salary to to save all their money? Or spend their money in this theory? Yeah. But one thing, especially they talked about, these people talk about is, especially for welfare, if you increase the welfare, are people going to save their money or spend their money? Are you sure they're going to spend their money? No. Yes, why? Why are people who are getting welfare, why are you sure they're going to spend that money? How much, if you're not working in Korea, how much money will you get from the government? If you don't have a job in Korea, if you're looking for a job, how much money does the government give you? Ben unemployment benefit. Job seekers allowance. Do you know? One year. Less than pay. $500. Less than $500 a month? No, no, no. One year. No. Pay, pay. No. This by case. Case by case, they must have, have some standard amount. In Ireland, if you live with your parents, you get a very low amount, just 30 or 40 euro, euros a week, right? But if you don't live with your parents, you get about 200 euros a week. So about 1 million won a month, okay? If you're not working in welfare. What about in Korea? I guess it's, it's lower, much lower than Ireland. Ireland has a very high welfare payment one of the highest in the world. Do you know how much it is in Korea? Unemployment payment is case by case. People's people jobs. The people's people if people mm -hmm. uh, very special reasons yes. and they gave very high income. Mm -hmm. It is that people unemployment <coughs> unemployment to Payment is higher. He said, according to before, his job. Uh, well, if you didn't have any job, you just graduate from the university and you're looking for a job. 
Does the government give you any money in Korea? No. No. So you have to work for some years first. Then you leave, lose your job, then the government pays you based on the case. Only for three months. So it's like the US, you don't have a strong welfare system for unemployed people in Korea. Okay. So anyway, if we increase the welfare payment in Ireland, then people is only getting one million one a month, right? That's not much money to live in Ireland. So they have to spend all the money. They don't have a choice. They have to pay rent. They have to buy food. So if we increase their welfare payment to 1.1 million, they're not going to save the extra 0.1 million. They're going to buy more food. Okay? They're going to buy more things. That kind of way. Okay? So, especially if we give the money in welfare or to the minimum wage worker, on the demand side theory, they're going to spend the money. Okay? If we give the money to very wealthy people, are they going to spend the money in the economy? Maybe not, right? They're already spending money, they get extra money, they're going to save the money maybe, or invest in another country, or do something else. Okay? So, uh, when we're doing this improving the demand, we can also think about that kind of idea, right? So, Keane says that the problem is people are not spending. People are not spending enough. So this makes the depression worse and causes very high unemployment. So he thinks, increase the government spending. Move the economy towards full employment. Okay. So this is also called the monetary theory because they're emphasizing the role of money. Okay. Money and credit affect ability and willingness to buy goods and services. If we don't have money, we're not working, we can't buy goods and services. So increase the money, supply, then we have more money. We can also increase, make it easier to get credit. So we can make it let lower regulation for credit. Do you understand regulation for credit? Do you understand credit? Loans. So we can also have low regulation for credit. Another cause of the financial crisis in the US. So in the US, they were giving the mortgages for the house, the loan for the house. Okay? So you are just a waiter. You're just working 20 hours a week on the minimum wage. Should I give you a loan to buy a house? No, right? But in the US, they were doing that. Right? Because they thought the house price keeps going up. So even though you don't pay back your loan, then I get the house and sell the house. What's the problem? Okay? But the problem was the house price went down. So the bank got all the houses, then they, they lost money. Okay? But the regulation for credit was very loose. It means the banks could lend money to people uh, very easily. Okay? That's increasing the money supply too. Uh, the interest rate. If the interest rate, so we're, we're going to have a low interest rate, and we're going to have QE, okay? Even QE on this side. So low interest rate, you're going to get a loan to buy the house. High interest rate, you're not going to get a loan, okay? You're not going to spend money. The problem is inflation, okay? We can have inflation. But these guys argue that uh, don't worry about inflation. We're in a recession. Okay? We should be worried about increasing output and employment, not inflation. That's their argument. Okay? So do you have any question about what we studied so far today? Low inflation means low interest rate means low inflation. Ah, yes. Why is the case here? Because now it's low, but in the future it can be high. Because if the price is going up, we, we can have inflation. Prices are going up. We increase the money supply, problem is inflation, right? 
As we increase the money supply, more people have more money, price goes up. Price is going up is inflation. So just at home you can just read about Keynes and his idea, right? You can find that information in your own language, okay, on the internet. He's quite a famous economist. So read about uh, Keynes and his theory, okay? He's, a, he's the main person who has this demand side or monetary theory. So I'll just search and read about his theory. Okay. You can tell me about it in the next class. Okay. So then let's finish there for today. Ah uh, yes, I thought I did, but it didn't come up here, so I'll do that. Yes, I, I thought that I did, but I didn't. So I'm going to upload that.